Welcome to Watercolor by Scarlett Damon. Today we're going to take a look at a color chart. I have collected all the colors that I think would create a good or um, good variety of skin tones and I've put them together to make a color chart. Now if you have never made a color chart before or you know nothing about color charts and you would like to learn then stick around because we're going to walk through how you do it, why I'm doing it, we're going to look at some of my palettes and see what I want to add and what I use. We're also going to be working on this little portrait although I'm going to jump in and out of the portrait and there's, there's we are going to finish it by the end but we're not really going to talk about it too much. I will include a separate tutorial about the portrait um, where I do a full what I'm doing, how I'm doing it, and why. So I will include um, a, a more detailed post on Patreon which will have the images, the downloadable image of the final color chart so that you guys can have that for your own personal use forever and ever if you want to reference my, my, my work here. <laughs> this is two days worth of work um, and I actually started on my lap which you can see above. This is one of these little table, uh, lap tables. Um, I really like working on a lap table. It's, it's nice and it's simple because I can put it on my, my lap and work at the couch. So I'm able to paint while I'm around friends and family. But then later on in the tutorial, it got a little too dark. So I stopped and the next morning I moved over to my desk. You'll probably notice that. Now with the port, sorry, with the, the portrait, I'm starting with a very basic tone, um, and I had to I had to do all these swatches to figure out what my tones were. That was my main concern. I have lots of palettes. This is my big one, my favorite monster palette. It contains lots of blues, reds, and greens. And out of this palette, I selected the Cadmium Red Light, which is a beautiful orangey color. Um, I use that palette to just have my basics. This palette, however, this palette is specifically created, it's a, it's a not a limited edition, but it's a, a unique palette made just by me, um, for botanical work. So you can see the colors I'm swatching out here. They're all bright and beautiful, and they work really well for bright, beautiful colors like flowers. This is my mini portrait, my mini palette, and it is uh, my earth tones. So, um... As you can see, I'm swatching them out here. These are blues and browns and a little bit of reds, but there's not a lot there in terms of portraits. So what I wanted to do, part of my 365, this crazy idea I have that I'm painting, um, one painting every day for the entire year of 2019, is I'm going to be concentrating, at least for the first part, on portraits. And the reason why is because portraits are my nemesis. If you followed me, for any amount of time, you probably notice that I don't paint portraits. That just doesn't happen. Um, I do have one portrait tutorial on on uh, Patreon that I put up recently, just a few days ago. Um, it's not going to go onto YouTube because, well, it's one of my early portraits, and I feel like I wanted to share it with the world, but I didn't really want to share it with the world, so I just put it on Patreon. But. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but because I'm so new to portraits, I feel like I really need to work on them. I'm not bad at it, per se. Obviously, I can draw, so that's a huge help. And I've done a lot of tutorials where I talk about the importance of drawing. I think when it comes to portraits, drawing is so important. Because if you can get that fundamental drawing down, everything else kind of falls in place. Or at least the drawing is part one. The colors are part two, and then being able to mix them in a way that makes sense, I personally feel is part three. So my drawings are okay, but my color tones up until now, um, what are we at, 23 days? So I've done a few now. Uh, not anything I would say is super amazing, but I've done a few uh, sketches and um, bits of, paint, of portraits where I'm just doing the ears and just doing the nose and just doing the eyes and just doing uh, the hair or the face, trying to, trying to match those skin tones. And my biggest issue is that my work, for some unknown reason, seems to want to go darker than I want to go. So everything I paint has this either really red tone or really brown tone and it just it doesn't look like me or anybody else I'm painting. So. The way I'm fixing that is to do a color chart. 
So let me quickly go through the colors with you and explain what I'm doing and how I do a color chart in the first place. I'm pulling the colors, and these are the same colors. They're all on here twice, going up the left side and across the bottom. Imagine a graph. I start with the two colors and I'm charting them out one to 12 and one to 12, one to 12 up and one to 12 across. The two that are on the far left are the same. So those are both Indian, uh, sorry, yellow ochre, and then going up Indian yellow, going over Indian yellow. And the reason why I do this is just like a graph. You're gonna go up and across and where those two meet is the answer. So if you've ever done uh, a math chart to figure out your times tables or, you know, something like that. I don't know, in school I did all kinds of charts that would just help me figure things out. And I really like doing them. They take a long time. But that's this, the basic concept. Now when you're done um, with color charts, you're going to notice there's a white line through the middle. And the bottom triangle, it kind of looks like a triangle, and the top triangle are actually mirroring each other. So you have the possibility of putting two colors that are the same onto the chart. But when I'm doing it, because I'm doing it line by line, I don't, and I see a lot of people that do do this, but I don't do it. I don't put, uh, let's say, um, mix these two squares at the same time and paint them at the same time. You'll notice as I'm going that I'm painting line by line. So even though there's a, let's say, number one mixed with another, number three, up top and there's a number three mixed with a number one down bottom, they are not painted at the same time. And a lot of people do, they kind of, I feel like it's cheating, but also, um, well, it'll make sense as we go. It <laughs> should be a little easier. So what I've got right now, this is kind of a raw umber. Um, so what I've done is I've swatched out the raw umber on the right and you'll see this I'm going to repeat it for every single line so I take the raw umber with my brush I'm using very little paint because I don't want to use it all up I don't need to do monster huge squares I don't really see the point there's 144 of these little squares which in itself is kind of crazy it takes a long time to do and it's a lot of paint so I don't want to use everything up right I only have so much um, so I will swatch out, for example, now we're doing the next one, which is seven, so we're at uh, Rose de I dab the Rose de across, and then I mix, or I lift, the corresponding color that would mix with that square, so that I have it all charted out. Now for me personally, this works really, really well. I'm able to stay focused, I'm able to know where I am, I don't have it on a, on a palette where if I walk away and come back, I'm like totally confused, like where did I start, where did I leave off, what's going on. Um, I know where I am. So once I've got the two colors in here, I mix them together and plop them down on the square just like that. Mix it together, just pop it in the square. Did you notice I skipped a square right there? That is because that square is Rose Adour mixed with Rose Adour, which, you know, cancels itself out. You could also paint it in, but then you would have three squares of the same thing, and it really depends on how much paint you want to use and how much work you want to do. I decided to just cancel them out and leave it as a open space. So we're back to the portrait. Um, yeah, we've got a base tone, and I think the base tone, by the time I was done, I selected three colors that I really liked, and I will talk about this in a lot more detail on the next tutorial where we dive into how and why I did this portrait. But the three colors I liked was yellow ochre with burnt umber, Indian red with burnt umber, and Indian red burnt umber and Pazulio earth. These three different mixes made a really beautiful skin tone which is the one I'm working on. The first skin tone I believe was the Indian Red with the Burnt Umber and then the darker version is the Indian Red Burnt Umber and Puzio, Puzoli, Puzuli Earth. So as far as I'm concerned that I mean this was a total success because by the time I was done with my chart I was able to pick out the colors I needed. That's that's exactly what I was after. The right side of the face is where the sun is coming in, so even though the hair, I mean this is a self-portrait, you probably know what I look like, um, the, <laughs> actually there will be a reference photo that's going to show up pretty soon, um, but the right side is where the sun is hitting, so um, I'm putting down that yellow as a base coat, and then later it'll become brown again. So we're back to the color chart. We are doing number 
six, because we're counting down from the top, number six is Potter's Pink. I really like Potter's Pink. It's a beautiful color. Um, it's very subtle. It's got a real grayish undertone. It's very muted in its colors, uh, in its its um, in its color, but it's very granulating. And I was using a lot of Potter's Pink in my mixes, and I found that it would granulate on the skin surface when I painted onto skin, especially when I used it for children. It looks like the perfect color mixed with a few things. You'll see this in a second as it, I mix it, and it really is gorgeous. But it granulates. And so if I use it for the red or the pink of the cheeks and such, then I end up with um, skin that looks bumpy and choppy, like like poorly, I don't know, like flaky skin. Like it's just not really great. So I'm going to move away from uh, Rosador. And I wouldn't have, I'm sorry, for Potter's Pink. And I wouldn't have thought about that if I hadn't done this chart and really been able to see all the alternatives that are awesome too. Instead of going to something that looks like it might work, mixing it with something I think works, and then trying out that, well, is that all I have? I don't know. This is why you do uh, a chart. Now, I messed up a few times. You can probably notice. Here we go. I messed up here too. Um, and at some point here at the end, I figured out if I drew a little line on my palette, that could indicate where that color was going to count itself out and so I could continue on without having to paint into that white spot. I think I messed up three times in total. But watercolor is actually um, quite forgiving. I've said this many, many times and I'll say it again because it really is quite forgiving. Um, a lot of people say that it doesn't forgive and once something's down, it's down. It's not the case. You can lift watercolor off of a paper using a brush, using a um, a tissue. Um, you can definitely get watercolor off of a page. The thing to consider is the paper you're using and if it's a, a, a true staining color, a really true solid staining color is going to be very difficult to lift if you can get it up at all, but for I'd say 90% of the colors out there you're going to be able to lift them. You just need to take a little time to do it and more importantly you're going to need high quality paper or at least thick paper. Because anything, anything less than thick paper is going to pill and uh, start to come apart and just look terrible. So this is line five. We're about to finish. And line five is Pizzuli Earth. This is the word that I have such a problem with. I'm always saying it wrong. If I read it, I get it right. If I try to do it out of my head, forget it. It turns into something else. You can see in the portrait that I've skipped way ahead. Um, I tried to chop it up. It was... It's a pretty long portrait to do and I didn't want to take up too much of your time with the portrait. So here we're working on the darker bits. I'm doing the shadows under the nose, the shadows um, around the eyes, the details here and there. And it still looks very cartoony. In fact, my husband came home and I said, what do you think? And he said, well, it looks great, but it doesn't actually look like one of your portraits now. I don't do that many portraits, so he doesn't have much to go on. But by the end of this, at the very end, um, late last night, I got up my eraser and I erased the entire painting and I got as much of the pencil marks off as I could. And that made a huge difference because all of a sudden the painting looked like a painting and not like an illustration or a cartoon illustration, which is not what I was going for although it is okay initially. Now it's very important when you're painting um, portraits or anything like that and you think you want to take the, those pencil lines off later, remember that if you're using any yellow at all it's going to be very difficult to lift those lines. In fact, um, some of the colors just won't, won't, come, won't allow the pencil to come off. It's, it's kind of sealed in. So you can see here on the chart in the top right corner in the last line, top right, three down, there's a little bit of writing. That is where I had originally written um, the last four numbers, uh, 9, 10, 11, and 12. I had written them on the side, and then I decided I needed more room, so I moved them up to the top. So that was Davies Gray, Cadmium Yellow, Cadmium Red Light, and Indian Red. And after I erased everything, it all looks fine, but there's a little bit of words that's under... Uh, number 10, the cadmium yellow, and then number 9 mixed with 11 and 12, which again would be Indian red and cadmium red yellow, or cadmium red light. Both of those have a lot of orange and yellow in them, so 
um, the, the pencil wouldn't come out. So that's a perfect example. I erased it and there's still pencil there. Now when I include this on Patreon, I will take the time to, if I remember, I hope I remember, <laughs> I'll take the time to go into Photoshop and remove um, that. And I might even straighten it out a little bit, make, make the chart a little more presentable for you guys so that if you are interested in keeping it, it'll look perfect. I'll try to match the colors exactly so you're not getting um, a digital rendering that's a different color but actually looks like how it's supposed to look. And like I said, you can get that as a download on Patreon. So we're back to the portrait. Um, it's hard to talk to you and stay dead on what's going on because I have this, this is all really, really choppy, like in about two seconds, I'm going to skip from the portrait back to, uh, back to the swatches. Da -da. <laughs> um, and actually we're almost done. We're almost done with the swatches anyway. This is line two. Line two is Indian yellow. Um, Indian yellow was very interesting. These colors, all the colors I have on the right swatched up with the Indian yellow, they're very orange. Indian yellow is very orange. You can see that um, on the left. On the on the bottom left where I have it swatched first, that's the, the fullest paint. And on the bottom row is the same color, but it's a lighter version. So in case you're not sure about what that is, um, yeah, so number two, you can see how orange that is. And then all the way across, I think these colors using the Indian yellow are really good. They're really beautiful. They'd be really good for something like um, a leaf. In fact, while I went through this, you remember a, way, a little way back I showed you um, a little up close piece with the green in it. For example, there were so many beautiful colors that I found here that I really wasn't expecting. I wasn't expecting that green to come out of burnt umber um, mixed with number 10, which is cadmium yellow. So the burnt umber and the cadmium yellow made such a gorgeous green. Yeah, one up, one over. 10 versus, can you guys see where that is? That really bright, beautiful green down there. Um, and that's the, the beauty of doing this type of work. That's the, the awesome thing when you do a color chart. Um, a palette becomes more than the palette. A palette, let's say a palette with 12 colors, something very simple. It's just 12 colors. It's not, it's not, I mean, you know, it's not the world. But when you mix those and all of a sudden you have 144 varieties and you have a chart that you can go to and say, ah, yes, I want that green. Ah, yes, I want that yellow. I want that purple. I want that red. I want that pink. And you're only going to get those colors by mixing. It's like, it's like opening, I mean, it's kind of like opening Pandora's box, right? Except nothing bad's coming happening. But it's just, it's awesome to have all of these extra colors that come out and are available. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed this. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial, this uh, look at the swatches and my painting. Um, I got a little rambly there at the end. Sorry about that. And this is the final swatches and then the final... Um, uh, color chart at the end. Thanks for watching guys. This was really nice. I'm glad that uh, that you're there and if you do join me over on Patreon, I hope to see you soon. Toodaloo!